are the makers, the breakers, and everything in between. We are the untamed spirits who are hard to please. We dare the challenges. We embrace dangers. We don't fear critics. And we don't care about doubts. We think, we plan, and we do. We do it for passion. We do it for love. We do it for tomorrow. From Sharjah to the world, we believe that today is the gateway to the future. Sharjah Research Technology and Innovation Park. Shaping the future together. This video is brought to you by SRTI Park Studio, a whole new visual experience to promote your business. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Sharjah Research and Technology and Innovation Park presentation, your regional gateway for innovation and business growth. The Sharjah Research and Technology Park is a brand child of the UAE leadership of enforcing the role of innovation and knowledge economy and developing the economy of this country and creating new opportunities for private sector, public sectors, and entrepreneurs. It's a reflection of the leadership strategy of innovation 2020-30 for the United Arab Emirates. We are delighted and lucky in Sharjah to have the ruler of Sharjah, His Highness Sheikh Dr. Sultan bin Mohammed Al-Qasimi as the chairman of the Sharjah Research and Technology Park. His Highness' commitment to education is massive. He invests not only monetary resources in developing the infrastructure of Sharjah when it comes to innovation and education, but his dedication is immense to develop, developing the whole ecosystem of education and knowledge economy in Sharjah. We at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park focus on four main objectives. The first objective is to develop an innovation ecosystem, not only based on the infrastructure of building and the street, but also the mindset of people. We also aim at developing next generation scientists, entrepreneurs, and leaders that can support our drive toward innovation. Our three, third objective is to focus on catalyzing knowledge economy, investing in technology and science and entrepreneurs so that we can have an impact and create enterprises that support the economy of the country and the economy of Sharjah and make it more competitive. And last, our fourth objective is really to invest in the future. We at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park, we identify companies and we vet them and we invest in these companies and we scale them up. Our objective is to create enterprises that will create economic, sustainable business. We at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park focus on six main subjects. The first one is water technology. The third, second one, production design and architecture. A third one is mobility logistics and smart cities. A fourth one is healthcare and digitization. And fifth one is renewable energy. And last but not least, environmental technology and circular economy. These are the six areas we focus on. And these are the six areas that we believe our colleges, our private sector have a competitive edge to grow and develop. We believe in Triple Helix. We work with government, private sector, academia, and none for profit organization to develop this, our ecosystem of innovation. We have launched research activities with universities and we're trying to commercialize this research. We also engage with government and implementing best practices when it comes to artificial intelligence, blockchains. We launch sandbox with ministries and we work with businesses as well in developing and commercializing technologies that will make them more sustained and more competitive going forward. We pride ourselves at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park to be able to attract some of the leading technologies into our park, whether we are talking about 3D construction or additive manufacturing 
or agriculture technologies or photovoltaic R&D centers or transport and mobility technologies or mixed realities. We pride ourselves to be part of a 47,000 students ecosystem at 22 universities and education institutions and more than 2,000 PhD holders all in the same place within the vicinity of the technology park. Since its inception, the Sharjah Research and Technology Park managed to attract global players, regional players, and local players. We proud ourselves to work with international companies like GE, like Intel and Nokia, for example. We work with GE on additive manufacturing. We work with Intel on solution related to education and reskilling. And we work with Nokia, for example, on IoT labs and other things. We also have regional companies leading in additive manufacturing like Amensa. We have also mobile fueling companies like Kafu. And also we have companies in health like Nipta. We also have local startups that are thriving and really defining the way forward. Since an inception at SRTIP, we believed to have a global vision and regional mission. We believe in partnership, sustainable partnership. That's why we work with countries, with academic institutions, with science institutions, and with UN-led organizations as well. The objective is to develop sustainable partnership and a win-win situation for everyone. We developed the Sharjah Research and Technology Park based on best practices. And its start, we managed to benchmark Sharjah against nine other cities around the world, from Boston to Marseille to Shenzhen to Bangalore to Hyderabad to Philadelphia. We looked at six main innovation criteria, like market and investment, interfirm activity, knowledge and R&D, human skills, infrastructure. And we looked at these things and we benchmarked with other nations around us to see where Sharjah is vis-a-vis -vis this nation and learn from these activities as we go on. Here are some examples of the bright technologies that we are developing here in Sharjah. We pride ourselves to have the largest or one of the largest transport and logistics innovation center in the world. We in Sharjah developing next generation technologies that will be promoted in this region and will become an integral part of the mobility, of the mobility solution in the Middle East. We also pride ourselves to have significant uh, investment and technology development in hydroponics and aquaponics and agriculture technologies. We believe that the Middle East food security insists that we develop these type of technologies and we work hand in hand with the private sectors, with entrepreneurs when, and with academias to develop these technologies here. Third, we also developing a photo, photovoltaic R&D center. Our main is to promote renewable diversity and bring new source of sustainable diversity to the energy mix when it comes here in the park. We pride ourselves to launch Energy Innovation Hub, a regional platform to engage and attract innovations into this region and link them to the industries of energy within the region. We also pride ourselves at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park to host one of the largest maker space in the UAE, the Sharjah Open Innovation Lab. This lab dedicated to entrepreneurs, to faculties, to companies to come and co-create and co-innovate the future of technologies at the park. We develop and promote this soil lab by engaging with different players, whether you are an investor or a company or academia. They all come and co-create and create businesses and enterprise out of this lab, which features cutting edge technologies in textile technologies, electronics, metal, 3D technologies, and others. For SRTIP, collaboration with academia is an integral part of our work. We work with universities in the UAE and around the world. For example, the American University of Sharjah is one of our key partners, and we work with them on four, three main areas. One around IP and commercialization, entrepreneurship and development of science, employment and, and, and internship, and also lab exchange. We believe to have innovation, we have to develop human capital and develop a strong link to academia and academic institutions. Here, I would like to share with you some other examples of the innovation we have here. We've managed at SRTIP in collaboration with academia and industry to create a fantastic footprint, a regional lab for construction of 3D materials. So we have today printed many houses 
using 3D technologies and using collaboration with education as well. Another example of what we do is we develop IP, intellectual property and commercialization of the IP and the topic, for example, here is conductive concrete. Another example of R&D is we are developing an ESCO skeleton technology that can apply for healthcare sector and also apply for industry within construction as well. And we do this in collaboration with academia and in collaboration with the private sector as well. The Sharjah Research and Technology Park also thrives on developing an ecosystem. I have spoken about the Middle East Energy Innovation Hub. This is a platform to develop new innovation within the energy sector. To be able to conduct our work at SRTIP, we have developed a comprehensive ecosystem that includes events and themes like the Women in Technology, promoting circular economy, and launching various accelerators on a flagship Accelerator is the Sharjah Advanced Industry Accelerator. We pride ourselves to be a home for the Middle East North Africa Innovation Technology Transfer Summit. We would like to position Sharjah as a platform for technology innovation and technology transfer in the whole Middle East. And we work with scientists, with science institutions, academia, private sector to be able to do this. In addition to that, we run a series of events at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park. These comprise webinars, exhibition, conferences that allow businesses and, and partners and tenants of SRTIP to engage and grow and develop their businesses and build up strong network with investors, businesses, academia, and government. We also launched the Sharjah Angel Investor. The main aim of this angel investor is to create funds and make funds available for startups to come and grow out of Sharjah. We also host many delegations, international delegation, throughout the year at the Sharjah Research and Technology Park. We host a lot of webinars and we aim to do more of these webinars to cement relationship with countries, with industries, and with different players. Sharjah Research and Technology Park also have a fantastic facilities for exhibition. We host many exhibitions and conferences at the park and we aim to continue doing that going forward. This is a summary of the Sharjah Research and Technology Park. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. We look forward to working with you. We work, look forward to partner with you and grow with you. Thank you. Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Hassan Sabri. I'm the sales director of uh, Acacia Innovations Technology. And uh, I would like to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk about this uh, important topic about the uh, environment and the technologies which we can use to protect our environment. Uh, we are Acacia Innovations Technology, AIT, and uh, our purpose, as you can see here, is uh, creating a greener future. We use uh, technology mainly to create this uh, greener future or to achieve our purpose, um, but actually technology is not uh, enough. Technology is just a tool and uh, it's to be used by aware people. So the, the key point here is that uh, awareness uh, of people in different countries around the globe for the impact of their activities on the environment, what negative impacts are there, what positive impacts are there. Uh, this, is, this is the first point, but even this one is not enough. So awareness, um, of the impact on the environment of different activities can be uh, with different levels as well. Um, so you can find someone who is aware that uh, uh, when he is printing more uh, papers that this is uh, impacting negatively the environment, but still he is printing papers. So this, this one is a negative, I call it, it it's a negative, negative awareness about the uh, 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 impact of his actions on the environment. And this, this awareness, we need to always stimulate or enhance this level of awareness to go into the next levels, to go into the level that he is aware or she is aware, anyone is aware about the impact on the environment of his activities or his actions or his what, what, whatever he's doing, and uh, he is uh, taking care of the environment. So he is reducing the papers, he's, he's printing, and also going to even advanced levels 
of um, uh, helping others as well, helping others to be aware about their impacts on the environment, and if they are not at all aware, he should like uh, try to make them aware about this. Uh, what we use actually uh, as a technology, so now going to the technology side which we are using, we are using IoT, the Internet of Things, in its most simple way. Um, data. We uh, try always to uh, uh, harness the, um, uh, the, the value of the data uh, to continuously avail this, we call it the right data uh, at the right time, um, so that our customers, they can do things right uh, with zero uh, waste of time, resources, effort, and of course money as well. So uh, it's mainly here we, we take IoT. Uh, IoT is a, big, is a big topic in the, in the technology actually. And it's including a lot, uh, lot of areas from the hardwares and the sensors and the gateways and the connectivity, the wireless connectivity or whatever sort of connectivity and then going to the to the cloud solutions, the analytics, the big data, the artificial intelligence, all of this are included in the IoT ecosystem. But we take it, we take it very simply, and this is what we focus on, and this is what we try to um, um, educate our customers to do as well, to start IoT in its simplest way, to, to try to, uh, to, to make use of the, of the right data at the right time, to take the right uh, decisions so that they can uh, reduce or just yeah reduce reduce the waste of time resources efforts and money. We focus mainly, as you can see, on uh, two 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 main segments. Um, uh, as I will show in the coming slides as well, we focus on agriculture. We call it the digital agriculture, and we focus as well on the building energy management system so that we can reduce the consumptions of buildings. Um, we work for a reason, as mentioned, to help our customers to continuously get the right data at the right time to do the right things, with zero waste of time, resources, efforts, and money. And um, continuously is very important. So it's not just for um, one specific project or something, I'm getting the data and um, taking the decision and that's it. No, it's a, it's a continuous way. Uh, it's like, uh, it's the work lifestyle. It's the operation uh, lifestyle. They need to have a process in place so that they can get the right data continuously at the right time to take the right decisions. And this is actually, this is, this is the approach which we think that uh, we, we, we even implemented this in our core values as a company. Uh, one of our core values is um, focus and keep it simple. No one, no one can make anything simple except if he has the right data at the right time so that he can take this simplest direction, the straight line. So if he doesn't know this, if he doesn't have the data required so that he can understand or know this direction or the simplest direction, he will go into several ways several loops, zigzag, until he will reach the point uh, of, of, of uh, destination, which he wants to, uh, to reach. He will reach it, but he will waste, he will waste time, he will waste uh, resources, he will waste effort, and all of this has a negative impact into the environment. So all of this is reflecting back to the environment. The benefits as well are reflecting to the environment. So, um, for example, uh, if we are talking here about the, the energy consumed in, in buildings. Um, average of 30% of the energy consumed in commercial buildings are wasted. And uh, just implementing a very simple IoT solution in the buildings with some, uh, just getting the data about the different, different areas of consumption and doing some very simple analytics, providing this data to the uh, facility manager or the building owner, um, Will, will, will do a big, or will have a big impact on the uh, uh, consumption of the energy. And you can see how this uh, uh, benefits, it can uh, reflect back 
to the to the environment by reducing the emissions or saving on the operational costs. So just very, very simple monitoring and optimization of the energy consumption in the building by having this data will impact the environment, of course, in a positive way because we are reducing the carbon uh, or, or the greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, ensuring business continuity and reducing downtime. And this one is very important to reduce the downtime of equipment or to early detect if an equipment in a building will, uh, uh, will fail or it has a problem. Because if it will fail during this downtime, what will happen? The, we, will, uh, we will try to uh, make other actions so that we can make things work. So these actions uh, or processes, it's their extra actions, extra processes, which will take from us time, will take from us uh, resources, will take from us effort, and of course, money. All of these resources, any extra action being done or any extra process uh, being done by anyone, by the way, anyone, anywhere, whether uh, individually or whether a community or even a country or the globe, any extra action, this, is, this has a negative impact into our environment because this is uh, considered as a waste and uh, 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 having the right data again and the, at the right time to do the right thing is with zero waste of time, uh, resources, effort and money is the ultimate goal for this. Um, forecasting the energy load and avoiding unnecessary costs. This is, the, this is the benefit uh, from the economical side, but from the environment side as well, forecasting and even the next one, saving time. So if you forecast and save time, both are friends of environment. So just doing very good forecasting or planning, uh, precise forecasting, what, what will happen? You will, you will uh, take uh, informed decisions based on this forecasting because you have the information and you will take the simple route to your destination. Taking the simple route to your destination means that you will not go into this extra zigzag loops, which include more activities, more processes that has a harmful effect into our environment. This is, this is the main point. And of course, saving on the time as well and saving money. And this one, uh, other than the economical side as well, the impact here on the environment will be that this saved money can be used into other green uh, uh, environment-friendly initiatives. All of this will lead to the reduction of the carbon footprint, and this is the ultimate goal. Then going um, a bit uh, into the different solutions, just very, very high level, so the digital, digital agriculture for the smart farming, we're using uh, some solutions, very simple solutions like uh, sensors we put in the soil, uh, soil moisture sensors who are wirelessly connected to our back-end servers uh, where we are doing some analytics on this data and then availing the data to the, to the farmers, availing the data continuously uh, at the right time, right data at the right time uh, so that they can take the right decisions and reduce any waste uh, of time, resources, efforts and money. This is the ultimate goal. And here we are taking the route as well of uh, advising all, uh, always uh, the farmers or the agriculture companies who wants to uh, embrace this IoT technology to go in the simple IoT way, not to go for complex IoT solutions from the beginning. Then talking about the uh, energy, the building energy management system, we call it the IoT building energy management system, with 90% of buildings uh, consuming excess energy, we offer this IoT solutions to improve the usage uh, efficiency, reducing bills, operational costs, and of course, this will lead to the reduction of the carbon uh, footprint. And the same, the same advice here, actually, to start IoT simply, to use the main value of IoT, which is availing the, the right data at the right time, so that you can take, uh, do, do the right things or uh, take the right decisions with zero waste of time, resources, efforts, and money. This is, this is the highest value which you're talking about, which is data. So it's mainly about doing the analytics on this data, uh, getting the data at the right time, getting the data from different sources in a very, very simple way, 
without putting any complex solutions and availing this data to the decision maker so that he can take this informed decision to focus and to keep things simple. And this has the impact as uh, explained, has big impact into our environment. Um, we are having as well uh, uh, some uh, uh, green company initiatives. We, we believe that small steps can have huge impact. So internally even, we asked our team to share their ideas on how to implement a green, a green lifestyle in, in the workplace itself. We have committed ourselves to 12 months, 12 steps initiative on making our offices more environmentally friendly. Some, uh, some initiatives like uh, uh, reducing the, the paper we are printing or even not using any, other, any papers and also not using the, the, the plastic or the paper cups. A very high level case study to show to you the impact of the environment, the impact on the environment from very, very uh, small, uh, simple implementation of IoT in a building. So here I'm talking about the hospitality sector in Middle East. This is an hotel. This is like a medium-sized hotel of uh, 500 rooms and their pain point was to um, reduce energy consumption and operational expenses during COVID. Um, the solution was uh, the IoT solution, our simple IoT solution for doing submetering and analytics. Uh, it was installed in a couple of hours, the solution, and uh, trying to ident identify the main contributors to this uh, energy, energy consumption. Actually, the outcome was amazing. So just in a few days, by using the right data or availing the right data at the right time, for the decision makers, like mentioned. This allowed us to trigger a big equipment there in the hotel, which consumes double its normal consumption. So just this, this early detection of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of, of this equipment, energy consumption, abnormal behavior, it led to early diagnosis and repair of the equipment. It led to almost $7,000 savings per month for this hotel, just in a uh, few days, uh, having the right data at the right time, and uh, already, of course, we, 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 we have a service agreement with this, with this hotel for a couple of years, so they are embracing this technology. They understood the value of having the data, the right data at the right time, and how this can save for them costs in a continuous way. Um, Simple IoT, and as mentioned, uh, IoT uh, in its simplest way, we are talking about data, very, very simple solution and availing the data for the uh, decision makers to take informed decisions. And very, very small actions can have big impacts. And these small actions, some of them even are, are not costing any, any money on the companies. So for just giving some examples that about this uh, uh, data uh, availability, uh, uh, of the IoT solutions, how this can have a big impact into the environment. In the smart grid, for example, the smart electricity meter enables real-time two-way communication between the consumer and the utility, thus making it easier for the utility to forecast or meet the energy demand of this consumer with less waste, and they can coordinate the energy conservation as well as energy generation. So they can give this consumer just by having the data of his consumption and forecasting by a simple IoT solution, they can give him what he needs, which is sufficient for him, without wasting any extra energy. So it's a win-win for both, actually. Then talking about uh, connected sensors, for example, uh, in, in a city, in the different smart city initiatives, I'm talking here about the simple Im implementation of the connected sensors. It can help reroute the vehicle traffic, it can help, uh, for example, uh, for making it easier and faster for drivers to park. So all of this is reducing what? It's reducing the emissions. It's reducing the uh, carbon dioxide emissions. It's impacting positively our environment. So you'll find what, what happened here is that we tried using the data, the power of the data, at the right time in a continuous way to... Uh, remove the waste. The waste here, for example, is the cars uh, searching for a parking and they are moving along the streets 
searching for an, 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 empty, an empty slot for parking. Uh, precision agriculture, and as, uh, as described, it's by using sensors, some satellite image uh, analytics as well. This can minimize the use of fertilizers, pesticides, and can save for us water, of course. And you can imagine the impact of this into our environment by saving water and by reducing the use of uh, fertilizers and pesticides. In the retail industry, up to 50% of the big retail companies across the globe, they have already adopted IoT in, in one way or another. In its simplest way, I mean, I'm talking here about the value of the data. And 80% of these early adopters, they already reported increase in their energy uh, efficiencies. And, of course, this improved their profitability and had a positive impact into the environment as well. Um, and from the top line as well, it's not just about the bottom line, about the operational efficiencies and savings of cost, which can affect the environment, but even the top line, even the customers, the customers uh, of, of, of any uh, company, they are already uh, engaged. So as much as 87% of the customers, they prefer to buy their products or services from companies who are environmentally and socially responsible. So this is important not just for your internal company, but it's, it's really now important to uh, your customers as well. Uh, you can see that there are customers now in different countries when they are booking hotels, they prefer the hotel which is green, which is taking certification or accreditation that it's a green, it's a, it's a green hotel. This, this is affecting also your top line. Some companies, they have already taken some initiatives with the likes of Johnson & Johnson committing to source like 35% of their energy needs uh, for renewable resources. And Coca-Cola, they are committing to retrieve at least 75% of the bottles they circulate into the market. And many more, many big names, they are taking this initiative. And the good thing is that the startups, the, the, the small startups, most of them now, they are taking this route as well. So the conclusion and the recommendation of this uh, uh, presentation is that about IoT and the technology uh, of IoT in a simple way to use it to, uh, um, uh, to, to improve the awareness first of the people on the impact of their action into the environment and to avail for them the right data at the right time. So now numerous companies, they are tapping into IoT in its simple way again and not only to improve their operational efficiencies, but they also uh, uh, harness, they are also harnessing the power of IoT to combat climate change and reduce their carbon footprint. So your, your industry, whatever, whatever the industry, can likewise do the same, starting with this, with this recommendation. So start simple with IoT, don't go into the complex solution of IoT, because this will lead that you will not continue. It will be difficult and it will be high cost to enter into this complex IoT solution. Start simple with the data. Uh, get to get continuously the right data at the right time to do the right things with zero waste of time, resources, efforts and money. And this, by default, all of this will have the positive impact into our environment. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Masa, and I'm a developer advocate at IBM, and today I will be talking to you about Call for Code Challenge and how you can take part in it. So with the climate change being one of the biggest problems we face nowadays, Call for Code is an initiative that invites developers, problem solvers, and everyone to take part in it and contribute to open source to help solve real-world re real world problems and address social and humanitarian issues that are being deployed in the communities that need it the most. So Call for Code is the only global always on tech for good open source platform to deploy and scale top projects through 
a host of offerings. I'll be talking about the sub-themes and um, why you should join and the awards in a bit. So why should you join Call for Code? Because first, it's an opportunity for you to build your skills as we have plenty of workshops to help you learn on the latest technologies in addition to free access to IBM Cloud to build, uh, to build your applications for the challenge. In addition to that, there will be plenty of mentors who will guide you throughout the challenge. Eventually, you will put your skills for the social good and bring your ideas to action. And you will be, you will be able to join a community of, four, of over 400,000 developers from 179 nations who are working on 15,000 applications and more. A little bit of history about Call for Code. We first launched in 20, 2018 with a focus on natural disasters. The winning project was Project OWL that, uh, that focuses on helping the first responders, uh, vic victims in natural disasters to stay connected. This application is currently being deployed in Barcelona, Spain, Australia, and Puerto Rico. Moving on in 2019, with a, with a focus again on natural disasters, the winning project was Prometeo, that is a real-time application with a predictive analysis of firefighter toxicity exposure. This application is currently being deployed in Puerto Rico, Australia, and much more. In 2020, we focused on climate change, COVID-19, and the racial justice. The winning projects were Agrily, that helps farmers grasp the climate change impacts on their crops to help them manage their resources better. This is currently being utilized in Mongolia. Safety queue to help you virtually queue when you want to run your errands uh, and practice social distancing. Uh, this solution is being deployed in New York. And finally, for the racial justice, CFCFRJ. So this year, we're coming back in 2021 with focus on climate change with the three sub-themes that I'll be talking about in a bit. But first, I want to highlight the winners um, and the finalists for the regional challenge um, in EMEA. So the winner, uh, the winner team uh, from Kenya and Bali Health, who worked on, on an application um, that is an assistant to help connect social, um, that helps to, to connect me, uh, medical, um, medical assistance in a safe and socially distanced way. Um, this application has a simple interface that is used through WhatsApp, and it can be also integrated with Facebook Messenger and SMS. The three finalists were an online accessible laboratory by a team in Uganda, a project natural disaster informant as an assistant that is by a team in Nigeria, and finally, an SMS-based education, uh, an SMS-based e-school platform by a team in Tanzania. So this year's sub-themes are three, clean water and sanitization. As you know, water is the natural resource that is most threatened by climate change. And with technology, we will definitely be able to find a solution to have clean and clean water in the areas that need it the most. In addition to that, zero hunger, as there are over 135 million people who suffer from acute hunger with climate change. With, with technology, we can help farmers uh, we can help farmers grow more crops in the areas of a drought and much more solutions. And finally, responsible production and consumption. This can help us with highlighting the footprint of carbon when, uh, of online, uh, carbon footprint of online purchases. As for the awards, um, if you're participating in Call for Code, um, you are actually eligible for these three challenges. Some of them have rules. Uh, Automatically, if you participate in the global challenge, uh, you're eligible for a $200,000 of grand prize. As for the runner-ups in the first and second teams, uh, they get $25,000. As for the third and fourth, they get $10,000. On a regional level, um, you're eligible for $505,000 um, in grand prize. And for university students, we actually have a special prize for them. The grand prize is $10,000, in addition to being able to uh, be eligible for interview for a role at IBM, 
And for the runner-ups, uh, for each student, they will also get to um, interview for a potential role at IBM. Now keep in mind for the judging criteria, um, these are like the four pillars of the judging criteria. Uh, first, the completeness and transferability, effectiveness and efficiency, design and usability, and finally, creativity and innovation. Um, this is the timeline of Call for Code for this year. We launched in tw March 22nd. Submissions will open soon in April 22nd, and you actually have the time to uh, submit your applications and solutions till July 31st. And then we will announce the winners in November 21st. I mean, November 2020, 2021. Um, there are actually some rules to participate in the challenge. Uh, first, the submissions must have at least one IBM Cloud or IBM Systems. Um, just use it in your solution. Um, and then the team size should be of maximum five members. Joining teams, um, actually, you can only participate in one team. And for the university challenge, all team members must be university students in an accredited institution of higher education. Um, as for the participation agreement, the participants must um, agree to the participation agreement, and the application must be new and built for the challenge. And finally, the winning teams will be, uh, will be subject to code review after the submissions are closed. So keep in mind for our upcoming events, uh, where we'll be working with the participants, we will be doing hosting office hours every Monday uh, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Dubai time. This is for anyone who has any questions, um, they can ask the mentors at the challenge. We also have the Call for Code main page. This is your resource for um, anything you're going to need. Uh, or if you have any questions, to submit your application, um, and uh, frequently asked the questions on the, the starter kits. So visit ibm.biz slash forward call for code. And uh, the starter kits, we have uh, prepared several starter kits around each sub-theme uh, for zero hunger, clean water and sanitization, responsible production, and green, cons green consumption. Um, you can get notified about our upcoming events. Um, in this one, we'll be talking about you know, our uh, workshops. Um, that will help you in the, in the challenge. You will learn about the technologies and so on. Um, on meetup page, IBM Cloud MEA, and uh, you can go to Crowdcast, uh, IBM developers, so this is where you, we usually host our workshops. Um, these are just links to more resources. Um, you can just take a screenshot and, or visit uh, ibm.biz slash forward call for code. You will have access to all of these links as well. And thank you so much.